uh, the Indigo Girls in my studio right now. Hi, ladies. Hi, hi, hi. It's good to see you. You hey, too. This you is a special treat. So you guys just decided to pop in. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> it's going good. So there's a lot going on uh, with you girls. You're coming off your new release, uh, which has been great. Thanks. And uh, you're in concert Saturday night at Chastain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I know when the Indigo Girls come back to Atlanta, this is an absolute homecoming. Like, how many people in the audience are your friends and family? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> the entire <laughs> Chastain. As our, continue, our career continues, more and more people are friends and family in the audience. Well, you girls are really like that. You really make your fans kind of part of the Indigo Girls family, which is very, very special. And do you feel that that has really grown over the years, I'm sure? Yeah, I mean, it's the point we've been around so long that all the original fans, including our family members, have had kids. So the kids <laughs> come and we get the next generation, and that's why we're still doing it. Well, that's exciting, and you guys are always terrific live. Saturday night, we're going to give away some tickets um, in a few minutes, but um, I want to ask about a couple things. Now, you know you're just coming off your tour, but you've been all over the place, so you've had a break now, so it's nice, relaxing. What do you guys do on your time off? Amy tours. I go on solo <laughs> tours on my time off. So, you, Amy, you just can't stop working? No, I can't. I'm going to stop you Come after this stuff, yeah. But I just do little solo things in between, and then... We both, you know, like when we're at home, we both like to relax. I like to go hiking a lot, ride bikes, ride my motorcycle, play with my animals, you know. And yeah. And Emily, I know what you like to do. Do you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say it on the air? <laughs> Drink wine, read people. <laughs> I'm on a diet right now. I'm not drinking any wine. Okay. I'm not reading people. I'm, uh, I've been fixing my house. I fixed the roof. And oh, cool. Um, just doing stuff around the house, and actually, I, I was involved recently in a project that I'm really um, has been very gratifying. It's with the Metro State Women's Prison Gospel Some, Choir. Okay, somebody just called in about that. A woman named Sally Callahan, and I want to give her the credit for it because she brought it to my attention. So I want to hear all about it's Voices of Hope. Yeah, the Voices of Hope is the Gospel Choir from the prison, and um, the director of the choir and the chaplain at the prison was a student of my dad's at Emory a long, long time ago, and so she it's been her dream for the choir to make a CD. So she called me to help be part of that, and then uh, all the proceeds go for the Children's Center at the prison that they're trying to get. It meets once a one month now, but they're trying to get it to be open every week. It's an educational center. It's a chance for kids to meet with their moms who are incarcerated. Local groups bring food. Um, they can play, uh, play on the computer or just spend time together rather than in an environment that's not conducive to their, you know, fostering their relationship. So it's really an awesome project. That is incredible. We're here with the Indigo Girls, Amy and Emily. And uh, just to hit on that for a minute, it's nice to hear that, you know, and I would, would love to see more about that because you see a lot of programs with people bringing animals into prisons and how it rehabilitates them so much just to have, you know, something, you know, warm and inviting from the outside. So we can only imagine singing is... It's very transformative. I mean, it's been the power of music to transform lives and give people hope who have come from desperate situations is, is very i mean it, it's palpable you feel the shift in people's lives when they experience music so and i mean speaking of dogs the women's prison also has a dog training program where they train labs to be seeing eye dogs and so the women are working with animals as well there's all kinds of very um, progressive and nurturing programs that are implemented in the system you know i think there's a lot of misconception about what what the prison um, life can be about, and uh, so just just a testament to Susan Bishop, the chaplain, and the counseling, the Care and Counseling Center of Georgia that fosters these programs for the women, and you know it's about hope and redemption and transformation. Is there a website where people can get more information the on that? The Care and Counseling Center of Georgia, um, you, you'd have to look it up online, but okay. they have a website, and you can order the CD, and then. Um, Amy and I are going to bring them on the road with us, and people can buy them at the concerts. And then I think eventually, if Amy's cool with it, we'll put it up on our website and have all kinds of links. So, just no, to I, continue. I'll have to are think about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're a democracy. It might be a little too extreme for me. No, I, I think we'll put a link up ASAP. Yeah, yeah. That is really moving, and, and I would love to see more about that as far as, like, looking at that. I, you know, you mentioned the dogs. We talked about the because some of these girls in, in the prison, something may have happened to them at a very young age and they're trying mm -hmm. to redeem themselves. And when people like you will come in and reach out and say, hey, you know what, everybody deserves a second chance. And That's absolutely true. I mean, everybody has had something happen to them. What we all have, you know, whether or not we end up in prison, we've had things happen to us when we're younger that shape our lives. And 
you know, but music is also not just touchy-feely, you know, and the redemptive power, the mystical power, but also the discipline of being in a choir, of having to work together, of working through your struggles, you know, having to work out problems without just running away from them. There's a lot of disciplinary things that are good for, you know, human life that happen within the context of a choir singing. So, and Chaplain Bishop would say that. And um, so it's been very, very beneficial for the women, not only because it's for their spirit, but it's also for their the tactical part of their lives and, and getting along. Well, the Indigo Girls, you guys do so much great. You're always out in the community. You're always raising awareness for things, and, and we appreciate that you do that. I want to bring something up. Emily, I mentioned this to you, because I swear every time I read about a, a, anything in a, in a magazine or pop culture, I like to let you guys know, like, oh, I heard it. <laughs> In People Magazine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. My secrets away. Yes, that's oh, right. right. <laughs> I, Emily's like, draw up. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't care. Uh, okay. I'm not going to hide. So, uh, okay, the movie Bruno came out this summer with Sasha Baron Cohen. I have not seen the movie, but somebody told me about this, and I've always wanted to bring this up to the Indigo Girls. Whenever it seems like there's something about lesbians or there's something about like being gay or so the scene in the movie I'm told is, you know, how to stop being gay, stop listening to the Indigo Girls yeah. music. So yeah. how does that register with you guys? Are you happy to be recognized? Any mention is a good mention. You're affiliated with this all the time. Like, well, you know, what comes to mind when something like that pops up? I consider the source, first of all, you know, because um, he's quite brilliant. Sasha Baron Cohen, so I, I consider the source, and I think he's so subversive that it, it flips it on its head a little bit. Um, I think, generally speaking, a lot of that humor is lowest common denominator and really derogatory and negative, and the sort of easiest thing to go for. But I think there are some instances where, like in South Park, for instance, or some certain shows that are so smart and subversive that I'm flattered to be used in that, because I think it forwards sort of that idea of radical thinking, and definitely, you know, He's, you know, quite an amazing person intellectually, and his humor is brilliant and stuff. So for me, if it's a subversive, sort of spins it around a little bit, and I, I like it. But other than, but other times, I feel like it's just, it gets old. You know, that's all. Right. Um, right. I right. agree. I agree with that. Um, you know, it's always a little bit of itchy when you're mentioned in the context of something where a joke is made about it. You know, but I heard we Thirty Rock is my favorite TV show. And I heard we were mentioned on that. I haven't seen it, but that show is each each character is a such a caricature of him or herself that in that context, they're making sort of fun of everybody and everything. Right. There are just no no boundaries on that show. So as Amy is saying, considering the context in that kind of context, it's um, it's funny and and you appreciate it. And you know, if in any way it furthers the fact that we are out there and we're part of the civil rights movement for the queer community then we take that responsibility very seriously and we, we feel grateful for the opportunity to be out there and possibly help the movement. Well, I think it's terrific when you're mentioned on show. I mean, listen, if you're being mentioned by Sasha Baron Cohen and 30 Rock, that's uh, some good company right there. And The <laughs> Office. We got, we got mentioned in The Office. That's right! One of the, most, the greatest shows. It's so funny. So things like that were like, you know, it's just like, yeah. That's so at that point, you're obviously not that watching uh, watching that much TV because you're on tour when these shows are on. So are your Blackberries buzzing like somebody. Tell me <laughs> People do tell us, yeah, they get excited. They, yeah. They'll call or email and say you were mentioned, you know. So that's I, cool. I know I get excited when that happens. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> okay, um, and you're doing the show on Saturday night. We're really excited for that. Um, before we let you guys go on my radio free lunch today. I'm doing a thing with the International Songwriting Competition. Are you familiar with this? Mm -hmm. uh, so people can enter in their own work, which I think is a pretty terrific thing. In your minds, as the Indigo Girls, here we have Amy and Emily. What are some of your favorite lyrics or your favorite lyricists? Uh, Bob Dylan. I mean, it's going to be some of the greats, you know, like Bob Dylan and, um, and Joni Mitchell and Neil Young. Um, Stevie Wonder, those people come to mind, but there are some great, like in the hip hop world, there's an artist named Kenan, whose lyrics are incredible. Um, even Eminem has some genius, genius lyrics, you know, when he's not being misogynist and homophobic. <laughs> Whether or not it's his character, you know, like that song Renegade, I was just mm -hmm. listening to that the other day, that is just pure genius lyricism. And then um, I, I like some whimsical writers like Sia, I like her lyrics and, uh, and the Weepies, I like the whimsy of their work, so. But the greats are very stirring still. 
Maybe this is true. Um, well, for I, I like Farron a lot. She's mm -hmm. a great lyricist. For me. How about her? A great folk writer. Um, I really love the guy on the Shins. I love his lyrics. I think as a newer, like newer artist, he was just um, a great writer. And my morning jacket, and some people that are that are more recent that I really like. But there's so many great songwriters right now. Like you just, I'll listen to demos that people send me, and I'm just kind of like, it's crazy how ele it's just exponentially grown, and people have really, at a younger and younger ages, are learning to write in this really sophisticated way, and it's it's kind of amazing to me. You know? And it is amazing that there is this competition that goes on where anybody can submit their work. Yes. Yeah. There are a lot of people who want to be songwriters just like the Indigo Girls and it's getting harder. Is it harder and harder to get your music out there or is it easy and easier because of the internet? I mean, it, it, it's some of both in my opinion. I mean, there's so, so, so much music out there right now and like Pro Tools revolutionized making home CDs and, and all that stuff. So really it's everything is, is flooded with all kinds of music. So in that sense, it's hard to to, to find a, a voice, you know, but on the other hand, it, there are opportunities through YouTube or MySpace or, uh, you know, whatever, all the technological opportunities now that have provided a way to get your, your music heard, and luckily, I mean, those people are landed on sometimes by good fortune, and so there is opportunity, but it's, it's also uh, flooded with lots and lots of content. Right. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of great, and there's a lot of crap. That, that's Same always been the case. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since the caveman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indigo Girls, Amy and Emily, it's so great to see you. Thanks, Mara. We'll see you Saturday Thanks, night at the big show at Chastain and later on in the show during Radio Free Lunch. Free tickets for the show. Always great to see you. The Indigo Girls. Thank you. Oh, and Matt Nathanson's playing. Matt Nathanson's. Authentically delicious. Oh, sorry.